of the day. Do you guys think, I mean, obviously we, we don't have any proof, but do you think that you're more likely to go viral again if you've gone viral once? I think almost all of us here have had at least two moments of going viral. Is that coincidence? Is that like, what do you think about that? I mean, you're on people's radar. So I definitely think when you have eyes on you, they're, they're looking to see what you do next. And absolutely. I mean, it just makes sense statistically, but it's not like a guarantee that you're going to go viral again. Um, because it, it depends if you capitalize on it, you know, and mm. I, I don't like saying that capitalize on it because like, I don't know. Well, I mean, like, I mean, it, you're a content creator, like it's your, it's a business, right? It's like still your job as much as it's a very Definitely. personal thing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and a very like often genuine practice. It's still like, you got to think of, you know, these situations as opportunities and, you know, utilize them the any way, well, not any way you can, but like, you know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Yeah. You want to make an opportunity out of them, but like, you don't want to stray far from your content mm -hmm. or cause like whenever I posted that clip, I didn't want to make another ranting clip after that, even though yeah. it probably <laughs> would have gained, gained yeah, some traction. Sure. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to be angry anymore. I just yeah. wanted to post <laughs> funny stuff. Yeah. So. I, I think it depends on what happens after you go viral the first time. As Hunter mentioned, we see viral tweets all the time, all the time of like viral tweets of funny observations or things that are just text that people don't follow. Mm -hmm. um, a lot mm -hmm. of viral tweets, people read it, go, huh, that's me. I'll retweet it. And enough people do that, that a tweet goes viral and it comes from an account with 300 followers. Yeah. And like you said, Hunter, 10 people follow from that. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think those people who have that unique experience stand a better chance of going viral than anyone else. Because yeah, if you and if you went from 300 to 310 followers on Twitter, I I can't even count the number of times I've seen people reply to their own viral tweets being like, a hundred thousand likes and no follows. Like, what are y'all doing? Yeah. And I think a lot of content, if it's just viral because it's like oh, I got a kick out of that but it's not indicative of what else they create or what else they post. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for you to follow it. Um, in which case, no, I don't think those people get a leg up on going viral yeah. again. Mm -hmm. I think if, I think it's a bit of a snowball effect. And like, like we were talking about earlier where I gave that dumb spaghetti thing example. Um, for instance, if I were to do another tweet that would start to go a little bit viral, there's a ton of people that follow me that have audiences way bigger than mine. There's accounts that follow me that have a million followers or half a million followers, 700,000 followers, whatever it might be. One person with a following like that, liking your tweet, replying to it, whatever it might be, will push it to their audience as like blank account liked this. And that reach is way bigger than anything mm. I would have on my own. Um, so I definitely think if you're a content creator, with at, at least somewhat of a following and you have a network of people that have somewhat of a following it yeah then you have a leg up on experiencing it again but um i think you definitely have to think about who will see it who will share it and what content of yours will they see when they come to your page and if it'll make them for sure hit the it's gotta be similar not. right like if you put a gaming yeah. clip that goes vi viral and they see other comments about gaming they're gonna want to follow you if it's like outside of what you do then people people don't care people are not yeah, what does your audience consume? yeah, What's yeah. That? what does your audience consume yeah what are people if, following you for it, yeah if they're following you for uh for lack of a better way to put it like shit posts then if every other if every other tweet you do is super wholesome and super um, mm -hmm. authentic and you don't normally have that tone with your humor, you're gonna experience what I did on Instagram, which is people are gonna unfollow right. at such a rapid rate because they realize that's not what they followed for. Mm -hmm. You know, right. it's like yeah. you saying with the window tweet, Hunter, it's like, it's it's not like people are gonna be like, where are the tweets about more window yeah. stuff, man? Where Where's that relatable go? window content? <laughs> like, it's just, <laughs> That's not it, you know? But if people followed because they yeah. liked your voice in that tweet, like they were like, hey, this man has a unique perspective the way he replied to people in the comments. I really like the way he conducted himself. Then maybe they'll like the rest of your tweets, you know? 
Because that is the thing that I've seen myself in my own experience, uh, seeing something that uh, I was exposed to because it was going viral and been like, oh, that's a really interesting and fascinating take, or that's wildly hilarious. And I will go and look at, you know, their most recent 10 tweets. and like, this is nothing <laughs> like, I have no interest in the thing that drew my attention is not indicative of everything else they're about. No interest in following. Yeah. Yeah. And this is kind of unrelated. Well, it's related, but not it's to what you said, um, you know, looking at people's feeds and stuff. That's why I think it's like I've started to delete my going live tweets like after like the day after, because I yeah, feel like interesting. if I scroll through my own feed and it's like a lot of going live tweets and not anything of sustenance, if someone goes to my page, they're not going to want to follow because it's, it's ugly. Like I try to clean yeah. up my own feed to, mm -hmm. to make it more appealing for those people that they might find you from from a, a tweet. Right. Especially with how Twitter works, where a lot of your feed is not someone you're following you click on their their uh feed and then you see you know a lot of just like going live tweets or just you know if it's, it's messy you know i wonder follow. if it still measures metrics even when you delete the tweet yeah i don't know i don't actually know it's so weird because i remember a time when when twitter for streamers was used as a means to communicate to your audience mm. so like kind of how i use discord um i remember i haven't been on twitch for a very long time about a year and a half roughly but i remember i would be like this is my schedule. I'm, I'm going to go live later. I'm going to go live tomorrow at this time. And I, that's like all my tweets would be about communicating my content to whoever was following me. And then it, I, I remember that's the majority of what streamers did. And then it sort of shifted to yeah. um, your likeness yeah. and the sort of content mm -hmm. you bring to the table and less of like, that's what Discord is used now for. People go to Discord if they want to stay updated on your schedule when you're going to go live. But even now and then I find myself, I'm like, I still get in the habit of just wanting to be like, hi, I'm going live later. <laughs> <laughs> I remember making a Twitter when I first signed up for Twitch because I didn't have a schedule. I didn't know I would become a streamer. I kind of accidentally fell into it. And so I would go live and people would be like, finally, I was sitting, I was waiting at my computer. I didn't know if you were going to stream today. So I made a Twitter literally just to be like, here's a place where I'll say, this is what time I think I'm going live today. And I had a similar experience of now I use it to more of just share a little bit more of my personality and a little bit more like um, the, the distinction between I'll use an Instagram post to share a picture that I think is worth looking at that provides insight into something interesting I'm doing. I'll do Instagram stories all day long because my cat makes cute sounds when she <laughs> sleeps. I don't necessarily want to tweet every time she snores in her sleep because you have to choose to find my stories. Like noting the difference mm. between content that is pushed to people versus content they have to seek out, I think yeah. helps curate not spamming people like you were saying, Loco, if they click your Twitter feed, you don't want it to just look like it's a thread of going live stuff. I knew that if I let it, my Twitter would be a thread of pictures of my puppy and my cat. <laughs> and let's be real, to me, they're all cute. To other people, it's the same picture a hundred times, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like to me, I notice the difference. They won't. It definitely comes um, down to like the platform that you're using too. Like Instagram definitely. is for pictures. Instagram stories is for, you know, day-to-day -day stuff. Whereas Twitter... I mean, you can do day-to-day -day stuff, but it, it really isn't as appealing to people, like you said. So I think um, knowing what platform you're posting to will dictate what type of content people want to consume. And, yeah. and the, the type of content that you consistently post on those, like making that sort of more systematic. I will like to say, because I know we're wrapping up soon, something mm -hmm. that I, I briefly touched on earlier, but I think is really important. Um, when we were talking about, like, for instance, my likeness got used in front of a lot of content that I didn't create myself. Um, it's always up to the discretion of the person creating the content, what you visually want your stream to look like. But something that really made me, gave me pause after that was like, should I have had at least a light watermark of my name? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I was green screen, for instance, and you could see down to like my ribs, maybe like my rib cage height sitting in my chair. And I wish I had just had like my name over, yeah. like over my abdomen area or whatever. Mm. You know what I mean? So people would not have been able to as easily put my content out there with my name not attached to it yeah. um, or if they did photoshop it out it would have been blatantly obvious that they were trying to not give credit you know um, so obviously like the aesthetics of your stream and the way you put content out there you know make it look how you want it to look 
But if that's a concern, think about a discrete watermark that you can use and not just something that you add later when you edit a clip and you put it up. Mm -hmm. The Last of Us clip, I did not share anywhere. I didn't post that on social media anywhere. A viewer clipped it, downloaded it, put it on Reddit. So putting it organically in the content you create on your primary platform, um, thinking about those things. Don't think about it as like you are controlling what happens to your content um, because you're not. There's so many ways that people can share stuff without your knowledge. Right. So think about if someone is to share it and you have no idea, are you happy with that being what's out there? Yeah, you're protecting protect yourself. yourself. Yeah. Yeah.